impulses, habits. You see, that's a good point that you have raised. That first we have a wrong understanding. So how do we have a wrong understanding? It goes into the mind in terms of the thoughts and the feelings. And unless we recognize that it is really a wrong understanding or I raise a doubt about it. So when I raise a doubt about the wrong understanding, <clears throat> then I have a choice to move to the right understanding. And if I take it for granted, then what happens? The chances are there that the thoughts will aggravate those feelings again and again. So when we start the Gita, <clears throat> the first chapter is devoted to this. The entire wrong notions and the misunderstandings we have in our life. And it is first created either by the thought or the feeling or some kind of a sensation. So let us raise a doubt. So when you have a pain or some problem in the body, you go to a doctor and doctor examines, no, no, you don't have anything, it's okay. Or you have something, take, uh, here are the do's and don'ts, here are the pills. That is how the science works and that is how the Eastern wisdom works. Yeah. But what happens is that, <clears throat> Our over obsession to the body and the mind and to the thoughts, <coughs> it is a universal problem. So the master in the Gita says it's a universal problem and that he wants to remove this universal problem. That is why the Krishna is known as the world's teacher because the problem is universal. I get carried away by some sensation, some obsession, some attachment, some expectation, and then I suffer, and I'm suffering in the mind, where there is no suffering. So I start claiming that I'm worthy of suffering. And when I claim that I'm worthy of suffering, there is no end to the suffering at all. So the first, first step is to remain aware what is happening? Everything is good in the body, every system is functioning okay, I'm doing the physical exercises, I'm eating the food. So you are replacing those thoughts. So because you have doubt, you created a doubt about what is happening in order to know it, in order to understand it. But normally people do not understand this. No, honey, you are wrong. Come on, sit down, talk. Why I'm wrong? I may have spoken, you know, something. Just out of the way it does not mean that my nature is this. So the other person, the partner creates a wrong understanding and then they stick to their imagined wrong notions and, and then that is one of the many reasons of divorce and uh, struggle in, the, in, our, in our relations. So first thing that anything comes to the mind, I raise a doubt whether it is right or wrong. Whether the way my mind follows this life is right or not. Let me check, recheck, examine and find out how to separate these forms of the sensation and thoughts from what exactly is the right. I'm doing everything systematically. I'm organized in my life. I did not do anything wrong with the body and still mind has those wrong notions. Well, like I'll give you an example like yesterday.
right, you explained a couple of points that is very important to notice. I will never go at this age to that high yoga class. At first, at the very first step, I understood it's a high yoga class and my age is 65, so it is not suitable to me. Second thing, even if I go, I will keep checking what is my limit. I will stop. I will not raise the limit. So okay. what happens out of the excitement, I raise the limit of let me raise my limit. So moment I cross the threshold, I will definitely feel the new sensations, which you are saying is real. So yeah. why should I raise the threshold limit? What is the reason? I'm happy, I'm doing it. Let me keep that limit of the body as it is and continue the journey. So what happens, you know, the wrong understanding sometimes takes us to to get obsessed with those thoughts. So are you saying yesterday I didn't listen to my body? You listened to your mind. You did not create, you did not started thinking out of the wisdom. Well, wait, are you? There and uh, uh, I, uh, the moment I started feeling the sensation, so let me first check what are those sensations and they are uncomfortable. Let me calm down and relax and see what happened. Okay. And if I keep on doing it, obviously I am creating a challenge to the body. As far as the meditation is concerned, all your sensations and experiences because you are living in a passive state. Yeah. So there we can really understand what those sensations and the visions and the color means. But if I cross the threshold of the body, we get obsessed. No, let me cross the threshold of the body. Now see what the Eastern wisdom says about it. That is the point of the wisdom. Does any sensation lives with you 24 by 7? Sensation comes and goes. Yeah. Anything that comes and goes, it means it was there yesterday, today it is not there. It means it is false. What remains all the time? I be, I am always aware of my body. I feel a certain kind of sensation which recognizes, which helps me to recognize that I'm, oh, here is a body. That is enough. That is the meaning of being comfortable. So either I cross the threshold or I go down. In both the cases, I do not pay attention to the body. So what you are doing, you are paying attention to the body. Your motivation was, oh, let me cross the threshold. No competition. No competition. No, not at all. So I have to recognize the very wrong understanding. Another the part, third can part. I, can I tell you something? Be removed so what is the confusion should I continue why I want to continue because my expectation is to raise the limit of the body why when I'm already healthy can I keep on doing repeating the same thing uh, at the limit that I have been doing so this is a part of the discernment and when you keep on doing regularly the same, for example, the high yoga to that limit, what will happen? One day the mind says, yes, you can, you can cross the limit. So what is happening is that the mind is, ha body is habitual. 
so the habit can uh, if the habit is formed to a certain level you can move to the next level so what is the confusion that i have a lot of expectation drop that expectation wait wait for continuing the practice until you can raise the limit so how do you know that you can raise the limit one day it will happen automatically naturally oh let me do it and i feel these sensations are good i can endure that is that is what you do in uh, weightlifting. That is what we do in uh, other physical exercise systems. So you're you're saying that I can still go and train hard. Sure. You why to leave it? Why to escape? I think I wanted to escape because. That is due to the expectation. So the moment you have. <clears throat> you reach to the limit, your mind says here is a limit, you did not listen to it. So now the same mind now see that you have you have not heard me, now I will give you the confusion. Keep on thinking about it. Unnecessary unthinking. That is the so that is what the right thinking. Right thinking means right thinking means, you know, that is also a part of discernment. I have given you that example. Uh, you have an urge to go to the restroom. So that urge is a knowledge. That is a sensation. Gives you the knowledge. So you go to the restroom, clear the bladder and return. Do you, do you, you does your mind repeat those thoughts? Oh, I have to go to the restroom. No, no. So how to know that uh, thought, the mind does not have a confusion. Any thought examined, any situation you have examined, and now the thought is complete. Now no more thoughts will come. Done. Yeah. Uh, you are taking a sip of water. So does it create a confusion? No, because every time you have a knowledge, you take the sip of water and done. I don't know whether you are taking beer or water. <laughs> okay, that's very good. So come back to the fourth step based on this context. It is very good that you raise this question. And it happens automatically. This is what we observe uh, in the teachers in the Eastern wisdom observe. When you are committed to it, uh, you have some event in a situation, you raise the question, and normally it is related to the topic. Why it happens, that we will talk when we start Gita. What is that part of intuition that you do not recognize? We recognize, oh, this question is so good. It pertains to the same topic. And that is where I started with the wrong understanding. Then I have a doubtful understanding. I raise the doubt. Discernment is that I have to raise the doubt. I have to raise the doubt. And then you have to raise the doubt until the thought completes the knowledge and you are free. That is one way to understand the discernment. So my friend, first step we did it that to know the real self. That was the first step. What happens, you know, first time we are introduced, we are not what we think, we are not what we act, what we, we are not. It is the false identity. And there the master, you know, the master is also raising a doubt. No, 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 what you are, you think you are not. What I am saying, you are the real self. Where is the real self? The first attribute of the real self is all pervading, eternal. Take it, eternal. What does it mean by eternal? It is beyond time. Then it is the truth. What is the truth? Truth means anything that remains the same in all the locations at all the time, and it cannot be objectified. So yes, it, it, it means that if it, it is beyond the space, it means it cannot be the object. Object means object must have a name and the form. This is the second attribute of the real self. Now conclude, uh, if it is eternal beyond time and if it is beyond time in the space, then it is all-pervading. So what it means by all-pervading? All pervading that it is present everywhere in all the situation, in all the location. There is no space where it is not. So what is the conclusion? Can it move? No. 
can it change no it is constant yes it is always available yes oh that is what is known as the spiritual consciousness oh so we we when you keep that understanding even in this situation which you are talking so you you should have repeated oh real self is eternal it is beyond time and the space it is all pervading we we are raising the doubt against the confused mind so that confused mind comes down oh, oh now this guy is identifying with the real nature you should have calmed down easily you should have applied that so this is that is the third and the fourth is that it cannot be objectified what it means i cannot see the real self in front of me the moment i see the real self in front of me it will become an object so it is limited it cannot be all pervading any object you know body is an object your body and my body so it is an object so object is limited limited by the body so it is limited in the space so it means it is there it is not here so it means it it cannot be all pervading oh, i am not the body calm down calm down mind i am not the body all those sensations should have dropped completely by that way of the thinking so if, well it's all that fear of, it's the fear of death yes now see that again you see you know we are talking of the first step only if real self is all pervading it means there is no two it is only one yeah you only have a fear when there are two <laughs> you if you have more than one then only you can say no i am scared of this if there is no two how can you have a fear so the fear is very deep and conscious impression in our mind that starts from our birth and it continues a seeker is always fearless whether he has the money and he doesn't have the money whether he lives in a difficult situation or an easy situation why i am the real i am the real no way i am the pure consciousness consciousness cannot be subjected to any pain and suffering so by so, repeating this again and again we are allowing the mind to settle in the new knowledge yeah but if that are right then we we take care of this body and the life because it expresses the consciousness if you do not have the body and the mind the consciousness cannot be expressed okay so taking care does not mean that i am scared of it anything okay. then what i know oh the existence is very clear about this guy who has taken birth with these parents and existence is also clear when this body will dissolve into the existence so i am in the state of the fearless a seeker is always fearless seeker has to become fearless then you become the higher level of a seeker because if you fear then that's duality you're saying that obviously fear is nothing but the duality i say fear fear of the known i'm scared of fear of something known it means i recognize there is a duality yeah even the fear of the unknown i still recognize there is something i recognize the duality <laughs> you look at this way so gita helps you to find out the right way of thinking and right way of approaching the life whether it's a physical mental emotional intellectual so it means i have to i have to build my personal professional social family life based on the second step that is what we discussed in detail in couple of the sessions and what is the right way you see the you have to you have to contemplate and reflect completely what is that 
Master says, find out what is your duty and responsibility. That is our second step. So you stick to your duty, you do your duty. So it also means you do your duty towards the body. Body is feeling some other unwanted sensation. Let me calm down. No, no, let me in. I will continue. And then I get worried. In the same in the family life. Somebody is um, reacting to your withdraw yourself. My duty is not to react. Let me remain in peace. When the other person comes down, I will tell him or her that, can we talk? Instead, you say, point me out where I am at fault. I will not do it again. I will not repeat it again. Don't start blaming and complaining and reacting. That is not our duty. So it, what happens? Your mind remains in the car. My mind is not constantly thinking, oh, this guy and that girl and my dad and my mom. You are free from, you keep the mind free. This guy, you name it Mike, he said, I have six houses. I said, very good. So I charge what I charge. <laughs> <laughs> So, because I have also to exist. <coughs> Six houses in the vicinity of where you are located. I said, wonderful. I appreciate you. And I'm happy to guide you on the journey of the self-discovery. They sent the invoice. You know, your hypocrisy comes out. That is how we examine people. We need how? not to do it. Hypocrisy comes out. That is how we examine the people. He had an instant response. I don't have the money now. I will pay you after a week. But he told you he has six houses? Uh-huh. So <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is he doing? <laughs> so I didn't say anything. I said, it's, I'm okay. You admitted it. I'm okay. But now he recognized that he has been a hypocrite. Ha ha. Yeah. The next hour he paid me. <laughs> My king. So we understand it, you know, we know either by the intuition. So hypocrisy means what I am not, I pretend. Mm. That is the greatest danger in the life of a seeker. What I am not, I pretend to be. I pretend to be. Whether at the personal level, financial level, social level, uh, no, not it, at all. Isn't that most of the world? Everyone's just to the billion people become a seeker. <laughs> Come on, that is what the Krishna says. I don't recognize. I say, oh, no, hypocrisy is the way of the life. But as a seeker, I shouldn't judge them. It doesn't matter that they don't. No, no, I need not to judge. I judge myself. I keep myself on the principle. What is the principle that let me continue my duties? What is my duty? I'm mindful. I'm a father, so let me do my duty as a father. I'm a son. Let me do as the duty of my son. So I'm very clear. A son has to respect the dad. Come what may. Simple. It's a social obligation to me. A social obligation to my mom and the dad, my elders. It's a social obligation. Finished. No more talk. No, no, my dad is crazy. No. I'm taking away myself from my duty. That is not my problem. So you see that you give a break. So what happens now? When you follow strictly, adhere, you strictly adhere to the second step. Within a week, you pay attention, you are mindful of performing your duty at different places in different situations. What happens? Your mind becomes blank. You need not to worry about unwanted, unwelcome thoughts will never come to your mind. It's a practical application 
of the second step because your inner attitude of the mind changes. Attitude says, no, let me do my duty in this situation and done. What is my duty as a, as a teacher? I should start the moment you join me. No, no, let us have a gossip for 10 minutes and then I will start. No, I must start because you have approached me to learn something. I should not waste even a single minute of yours. And I should talk substance. That is my duty here at this moment. Same way your duty as a seeker is also that you pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. So all the time, if I recognize what is my duty as a seeker, what is my duty as a teacher or a businessman, problem is there is no, I need not to worry about being hypocrite. I need not to because I'm not going there. If I'm performing my duties all the time in different situations, where the hypocrisy comes? No way. And because it does not come, my mind is already calm. So that calmness of that calmness is known as the purification of the mind. We have millions and trillions of impression. We become impulsive and reactive. So what happens? Uh, the moment I, my mind, attitude says, let us react. No, no, hold on. What is my duty? I remember. I perform my duty. Finished. Done. I have done my work. So as a teacher, I did not respond to him. No, not at all. Why should I? Why should I dig him deep inside? Let him do what he's doing. But I will, reflect, I will help him reflect on this. I will help him reflect so that he can go into his unconscious areas that is being expressed in the attitude, in the thought, in the, uh, this is what happens, one Michel, so I'm just giving you unknown name to hide their identities, one, one Michel, she was attending a group session and she was not paying for the last three months. And I, normally I don't care. I said, okay, you are attending. So by chance, I, I said, no, I'm not getting the payment. You know? So I wrote to her and she wrote me back. I'm suffering from, I just underwent a knee surgery. I said, what I have to do with your knee surgery? I blasted on her. So in some situation, in some situation, I blasted not out of the anger and hesitation. But just, you know, I, I just played my role. Yeah. She paid me all her dues. So sometime it happens. Sometime they leave it. They don't pay. So I'm okay. I'm okay. That is the way the life is. Yeah. That is the way the life is. So, so you see that, you know, you have to act responsibly in different situations. She wrote me a long email and I'm having this, you know, I'm single as well. I'm also single. As long as I'm sitting with you and teaching you, I'm single. <laughs> Don't give a wrong logic. This is what the discernment is. You focus on that. You are learning. You are changing. You like to attend the session. You don't want to miss the session. For what? Or you say that I cannot pay you. You prove that you cannot pay. I'm ready. I'll give you. I volunteer my sessions to the Ukrainian people. There are 25 people come. I don't charge even a single penny. Anyhow, you know, I'm not going detail in there. Another Michelle asked me, I read on the Google that the masters in the Eastern wisdom, they do not charge any money. So why are you charging money? I said, yes, if you are the highest level of a seeker, the seeker realizes their responsibility. So they donate money once every year to that monastery. From that money, the masters maintain their livelihood. Are you ready to pay me $10,000 this year? <laughs> you distort the logic. Yeah. You distort the logic. 
So, you know, sometimes your humility and your kindness also becomes a curse. Don't allow the humility and kindness to become a curse to you. It will confuse you. Be straight. Yeah. You should have a clarity. Then she sent me an email, I'm very sorry. So we face all those situations, you know, in our life. So now you see that once we do this, follow the step number two, what happens because your attitude is focused on your duty and responsibility. So the first time, this, you are not practicing the second step, the ego was the doer and the experiencer. Now what happens, because you are fulfilling your duty and responsibility in different situations, ego drops down, ego starts dissolving. You experience as if there is no thinker and the doer. I have a clarity, this is my duty I have done in my life, at, any, at all the moments in your life. So what to do if there is no doer and there is no experiencer? Oh, you have moved to the third step. That is what we discussed in a different way in the last two, two or three sessions. So there comes the existence. The very existence is the doer in me. So let me recognize, I am dissolving the ego on one hand and I am replacing it. It is the existence which is the doer in me and expressing the behavior and the action in the world. Ah, it's such a beautiful experience all the time, all the time. Because now you are connected to the existence and that helps you to live at a higher level of a seeker. What happens, you are aware of that infinite consciousness that expresses in terms of the duty, the behavior, and the action. You always remain calm and happy and joyful. No way, your fear starts dissolving. But then what happens? Now you see the scheme of the steps, the way the masters have designed. Then comes the then comes, you know, then what comes? Then comes the fourth step. What is the fourth step? The fourth step says, still, if you have to dig deep inside, you have removed the hypocrisy, you are dissolving that ego as a doer and the experiencer, then what happens? Then what happens? Still the past impression, which has a fixed deposit in our mind, that prompts you to act wrongly in certain situations. So we cannot know until they are expressed outside. Unreal, the, the same incident that you have explained to me, that is another, there is some motivation inside because without motivation you cannot act. And that particular action brought you these sensations. And ultimately, these sensations took you to, to a sense of fear, and then your sad sensations are real. Instantly, I could not recognize real is one that is always present. So today I have a sensation, tomorrow it is not, it is branded as a false. It does not exist at all. So if it does not exist now, why should I repeat it in my mind? But why I am repeating it? It is because, because of the past impression. Can I use the bathroom real quick? Yeah.
my capacity, I should have recognized, and I should have calmed down. Don't you stop the traffic, uh, don't you stop your car at the red light? No, I will not stop. I will not stop. I am doing the right thing. Yeah. So there you stop it, and here you don't want to stop. So what is, you know, I'm just pointing out, it is because of the motivation inside, unknown impressions is pushing me to do that. So what are those unknown impressions? There are millions and trillions of impressions because of that we have taken the birth as the human lives. We have to release all those impressions. First, those impressions are removed in, in by the second step because I'm doing my duty. Now I recognize that many a times I miss, I enter into the fear, into anxiety, into duality and a conflict. And uh, when I discern, I recognize it is happening because I don't know. It is happening without any uh, substantial reason. So it is because of those past impressions are triggering me to act in a certain way. And that makes me upset. So what to do? So I rely on the existence, which we normally people say it is a God. Let the God do my action all the time. Let me focus on the action. And what is the action? It comes from the right knowledge. Then I have a right desire. Then I perform the action. What is the right knowledge? That I have to perform my duty in a given situation. That is all. So simple. But then the third step starts dissolving the doership as if you are spontaneous in your life. You're just walking around, doing your work in the business. That sense of emptiness prevails because now ego is not being doing these actions. So you start recognizing there is some existence that is doing all these actions. So the mind remains free. So now see that I told you last time also, there is an intelligence behind everything in this universe, every change in this universe, every action in this universe. I was looking at the Discovery Channel and they said the tobacco plant do not have a nicotine as they grow. Then why they, how they get the nicotine? They are not conscious entity. They cannot think. They cannot make a choice. They cannot make an option. So then how come they have a nicotine? So a scientist was explaining that there is an insect which uh, grows on that tobacco plant. And that insect loves the leaves of the tobacco plant. And they start eating that. So the masses sent to the entire tree. Pay attention, it's such a beautiful example I got last week. So the some intelligence sends the signal to the entire tree until the root. And then they start developing a poison in the leaves, which is known as a nicotine in the tobacco plant. So the plant develops its poison to kill off the bug from eating it. Yes, and they, then they kill the bugs, and the bugs leave it. Can you think? Can you imagine? Can you find out that intelligence is still working in every object of this in universe, everything, whether it's a non-living, living being, electron, proton, and neutron? Yeah. It's constantly working. This mouse cannot move until the external force is applied, law of inertia, law of motion, intelligence. That intelligence keeps my mouse at the same stationary position. But if I apply the external force by the intelligence, it moves, it works. Everything of this universe, so you recognize there is one unitary consciousness of the nature of intelligence is working behind every object of this universe that idea gave the concept of a god because it is present everywhere and we have already clarified in the very first step that the real self is all pervading it is eternal it never changes 
it does not take birth, it does not die. Is the real self the same thing as the intelligence? Yes, it's the same intelligence. The same intelligence is nothing but the consciousness. Because there's only one. There is only one. And the consciousness does not manifest in the mouse because it does not have a medium. What is that medium? Medium is the mind. You give the mind to this mouse that consciousness will reflect into the medium. What is the reflected medium? Is the mind. Reflected medium, it reflects. When it reflects, that's how I'm speaking, acting, and working. Oh, so I'm not the doer. Yes, it is the consciousness which is the final doer. That is what the third step. In other way, we can also understand that there is some intelligence behind every change. I'm speaking, that is also a change. There must be a doer of that change. Who is the doer of their change? It is the consciousness. No, no, I, I'm speaking. Consciousness is not speaking. Okay, let me remove the consciousness and then speak. Remove the consciousness. When the body is dead, we say body is here. We don't say a live body. We say he is a person is here. Person is here. We say body is here. Something is gone. That person contains that consciousness. That consciousness is the ultimate reality of the universe. Look at this. So it means there must be a doer of that chain. There is an intelligence or consciousness behind any chain. You know, how you relate consciousness and intelligence because it's a knowledge. Knowledge is consciousness. And if the consciousness is the knowledge, so that knowledge is nothing but the intelligence. How a crocodile finds its prey. Sometimes we eat nasty things and we have a diarrhea. And the crocodile lives, you know, like a king. We misuse because of our ego, as it were. We have replaced that consciousness as our ego, as a doer. And that's we become hypocrite and we become you know, a lot of stuff. We already know what is happening in the... Another part is very important in the third step master points out you cannot break the rules of the universe. You have to follow it. <clears throat> Can you make the sun freezing? Not possible. Can you bring a bucket of water from the sun? Not possible. Our scientists do not recognize the truth. There was a space before, millions of years ago, and there is a space now. The space does not change its property. <clears throat> if it does not change its property, it is because of some intelligence behind it. Water did not change its property for millions of years and billions of years. Think of this. Think, just, just understand this, this, oh, I build such a big house, I don't have a house, you know, I'm homeless. So anyhow, so when I say this house, I build this house, okay, really build this house? Let the brick in the wooden frame drop their properties and build the house. Build the house. You are building, you are such a great builder, you build houses of 10 and 20 million dollars. You cannot build the house unless the objects and the things that you are using in that building, that house, do not contain the intelligence to stay still, to stay straight. You cannot do that. So they are also following the intelligence. They are also following the same one existence. Come on, name me anything. <clears throat> No, no, I have a soft drink, you know, soft drink. Without water, you cannot make a soft drink. Come on. Water is the essential element. Water follows its properties. That's why you make a soft drink. If water does not follow its properties, you cannot do anything. You cannot do anything. Oh, I created this, I discovered this. No way. Look at this. Look, look the world from that perspective. That's why the mango tree always gives the mangoes. 
Orange tree always gives the orange. Their source is the same clay, same soil, same fertilizer. There has to be some intelligence. You grow the mango and the orange tree side by side, they still give you the mango and the orange trees. They don't give you, they, they do not interchange. We are crazy human race, we change everything because of our ego. We say, I can change. Like, come on, you cannot change anything. That is, that is known as the inner self. There, it means there is an inner self in every object of this universe, including the human race. We can recognize the inner self, and that is why we have an Eastern wisdom. Eastern wisdom helps us to recognize that inner self. We really understand and recognize and experience that inner self is pervades everywhere. That is one subject matter of our meditation also. Now here comes the diversion uh, from the scientific understanding. What is that? You have often heard that nature is intelligent. Really? Nature is intelligent? Yes, very good. So if the nature is intelligence, then nothing will die. The mango tree will never die, even after 200 years, because it is a part of the nature. If the matter, nature means the matter. If the matter is really intelligent, I agree with you, all the scientific community, I agree with you. So then it means this body is intelligence. Body contains the intelligence. So if the body contains the intelligence, body will not die. You need not to worry about the death. It means, what it means, nature is intelligence. It means that intelligence is the property of the nature. Body means that that intelligence is the property of this body, but it dies. What we say, that intelligence is separate from the nature. That is the real self of the mango tree. That is the real self of every object. That, of the that sounds like duality. Yes, we have to start with the duality and then we come down to the unitary consciousness. First, we have to remove the doubt. I am extracting what is different from the material world. If I do not extract that consciousness or that intelligence from the very nature, then I will continue to live with the wrong notion, false notion. I live continuously into the delusion. Discernment simply means you separate from the false and real. So once we separate, then we will come back and we will see, ah, does the false exist? So are you, so you're saying my body is not intelligent, it's from intelligence? Yes, it is the presence of that consciousness manifests the intelligence in the body according to its properties and sustains the body. If, if you know, so simple, if, if the body is intelligent, it means body is a matter. Yeah. So if the body is a matter, it, it, it means if the body contains the intelligence, this mouse should also contain the intelligence. This monitor should also contain the intelligence. It is not. But how come? The matter is inert. We know it. Matter does not know itself. Because it is unconscious. Matter does not know itself and matter does not know others. You cannot suffer from diabetes. The body intelligence will say, stop this. Huh. You, you will have a voice from the body. No, you are destroying me. Because it, if it is has an entity <coughs> with the consciousness, if it is the property of the body is intelligence, the body will continue to live. It will stop you. It will fight with you. Don't eat desert. Don't eat. You'll be in a problem. It will stop you. 
So if the body has intelligence, if the mind has intelligence, if the intellect has intelligence, there are three eyes now. They will continue to fight against the one another. Yeah. So third step indicates, so look at this, you have to offer all your actions, your duties. I offer, I'm talking to you as a teacher, so let this action of the teaching be offered to the existence because it is coming from the existence. So I become a contributor. I do not become an arrogant teacher. Then what happens? The mind continues to purify itself. See the other point? I'm stressed in the morning. It is my mind that has created an I which says I am stressed. I'm happy in the afternoon, second I. I enjoyed so I, I enjoyed the company of the third person in the late evening. I'm disturbed. I have a disturbed sleep. So there are already a four. I like this. We have millions of eyes that is constantly changing. What is changing is not real. <laughs> I have to recognize whatever the changes that take place in the body, mind, thought. Ah, it is all subjected to a change and what changes is not me. There is one constant I that is pure consciousness. Let well, my mind, my mind wants to tell me then, like, Mind, it is the intellect which says everything is chasing, changing, doesn't matter. So I respect that change. I abide by the law of the existence. I abide by the law of the universe. I accept it. Okay. So if I accept it, there is no duality. What is that duality? I don't like change. I like the change. You have a sickness. Don't you want the change from sickness to the health? Yeah. In one condition, you like a change. In other condition, you don't like a change. So it is the problem with the mind. Come on, it is for, it is the impurity of the mind. That is what we say. It is the impurity of the mind. Don't get attached to the change. Don't get detached to any change. You see behind, it is the one consciousness which is working. It is one intelligence that is working. So that is the step number two. So I constantly live into that state all the time. I remember. I replace in my head that ego replaced by this existence, this awareness. Now, this, abide, you know, body, body abides by its laws. Body is a universe. Who created this universal law? Did you create the universal law? No. Whosoever takes birth has to leave, including the car. After 20 years, it is used, it is destroyed. We say, uh, what we say, scrap. And then we recycle it. We build some bowels and other stuff. That is what is going to happen to this body and that body all the time. So uh -huh. the existence has to continue its cycle. So if I interfere in the cycle, it means I have a preference. So when I have a preference, it comes from the ego. And the ego causes these likes and dislikes, joy and this sorrow. Because of the chains I like, it is my pleasure. Because the chains I dislike, it is a pain. And that is that brings to a clear understanding of the step three. But there are still a lot of impressions lives deep inside my mind and they flare up. They return with a greater force and I get upset. I am frustrated, like the one incident that you explained. So we say the step number four will be, that we have to understand what is binding desire and what is unbinding desire. The ego changes its color and returns again to our day-to-day -day activity. So how the ego changes its color in the shape and the format? Ego relies on the binding desire. It binds you. And the, the moment it binds you, all the material of that doer and the ego returns and then we fall down from becoming a seeker. 
And once we stop becoming a seeker, we go to the same state again. That is what is happening. This little fear disturbs the whole harmony of the mind. Yeah. And it says, no, I don't remember those first three steps. If you don't remember, that is ignorance. So what happens in ignorance? The misconception takes over. The wrong, wrong ideas takes over in mind. You get obsessed with those wrong ideas, claiming that it is real. How many times we have understood that anything that is changing is not real? And you are seeing sensations are real.